This video is our first look at seventh grade math. Um, module one, lesson one, an experience in relationships as measuring rate. So today you guys are going to compute unit rates. Um, you know you got this when you can answer all the problem set questions correctly before checking your answer. And the standard here, if you notice this seven, it means seventh grade, um, and it's seven RPA one, compute unit rates associated with ratios of fractions including ratios of lengths, areas, and other quantities measured in like or different units. All right, our big goals are going to remain the same here. Um, one and a half grade levels when you take your I ready at the end of the year, and at least 80% um, mastery on this year's um, objectives. All right, so lesson one with seventh grade is a review of a lot of stuff we learned about ratios and unit rates and just rates in general with sixth grade. So I'm going to read through this box um, just to reiterate some stuff we've gone over um, previously. So a ratio is an ordered pair. Um, so that means two numbers which are both not zero. zero. So you can write ratios like this. You can also write it with the word two or as a fraction. Um, we have been using fractions a lot recently simply because a lot of times it's easier to manipulate ratios if they're written as a fraction. All right, um, now ratios are equivalent if you can multiply both ratios by the same number. So if you notice here, you have a ratio AB and you're multiplying by C, okay? If you multiply both parts or divide both parts of the ratio by the same number, you get an equivalent ratio. Now, a ratio relationship between two types of quantities, let's say you have five miles per two hours, can be written as a rate, and we discussed unit rates. So if you're going five miles for every two hours, you can divide and you get two and a half miles for every one hour. That is called a rate. Now, the numerical part of the rate, that means the number, is the unit rate. So in this case, the unit rate is the two and a half. Okay, so the number is the unit rate, um, and then the entire relationship written out with the label is called the rate. Okay, normally that isn't a big deal if you mix those up. Unit rate and rate are very similar. Just understand unit rate is the numerical part, the actual number. Now, before I move forward, you can probably hear some toys going off. Uh, I once again got my dog a few new toys, so I apologize if you hear that. Now, moving down to the table, I'm going to give you guys a second. Please just fill in what you have here written in red. Um, so pause the video, fill out in red, and then I'll explain this situation here um, so we can complete the rest of the table. Okay, so what's happening here is we're going to assume we did an experiment where our goal as a class was to pass out 24 papers as quickly as possible. Now, we did this four different times, okay? okay you just got to use your imagination. Every time, it took us less time to pass out the 24 papers, and that makes sense, right? Because as you practice something, generally you get faster, you get better at it. Think, think your multiplication facts. The more you practice it, the better you become. Same with long division, same with, I don't know, just playing video games, right? The more you practice it, whatever that skill is, the better you become. So trial one, meaning the first time, we passed out the 24 papers in 12 seconds. Now in this column, what you're going to do is you're going to write the ratio in all four, all four, all three forms, okay? So um, and the ratio is papers passed to time. So the number of papers passed needs to come first and the time needs to come second. In this column, you're going to calculate the rate. So that is the, the number, the unit rate, with the label. So here, because we passed 24 papers in 12 seconds, you divide to find the unit rate and you can pass out, as a class, two papers per second. And then the unit rate is just that numerical amount, which is two. So what I want you to do is go through these other three trials. Write the ratio in all three forms, then write the rate, then write the unit rate. Now, it is okay 
for your rate or unit rate to not be a whole number. That is possible, um, which is really the main difference between sixth and seventh grade. In sixth grade, usually this unit rate is almost always, if not always, a whole number. But in seventh grade, the unit rate can be a fraction or a decimal. So when you're dividing, if you get a decimal, that is okay. So for instance, number two, 24 is not divisible by 11. So that's going to get me a decimal. All right. So work through those and then come and check the video when you are done with the table. What you see here is what your table should have looked like. Um, the first one was done for you. Uh, for trial number two, I wanted you to notice the line over the 1 8. Um, that line is there because when you divide 24 by 11 and find the rate in the unit rate, that 1 8 repeats over and over again. Okay? So if you put a line over it, that marks the repetition. So it is 2.18 with the line over it. Okay? Now, for number three, you should have got 2.4. No line because it stops at 2.4. It goes in evenly 2.4 times. And then number four, you should... Rosa. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Uh, for number four, you should have got three papers per second. Okay? Now... Moving on, um, for example number two, we're going to assume we counted the number of boys and girls in seventh grade and then the whole seventh grade. So pause the video for a second and fill out this table. Then what you're going to do is write a ratio of boys to girls in each of these blanks. Okay. After that, you're going to create a pair, so that's two, equivalent ratios by making uh, comparisons up here. So, for instance, if the, the ratio of boys to girls in class 1 is 14 to 12, you can create some kind of equivalent ratio of boys to girls that is equivalent to class 1, that is equivalent to that ratio of 14 to 12. So go through that. There is plenty of room here. If you want to make more than two comparisons, you can, but fill out these ratios, then create some equivalent ratios down here on the bottom. When you're creating them, please make sure it is clear what the ratio is equivalent to. So notice the table over here. Um, we filled in our ratios. I chose to write each ratio with a colon. If you wrote it in all three forms or you used one of the other two forms, either a fraction or with the word two, that is perfectly fine. Now, what I noticed down here, though, is all three of these ratios are actually equivalent to each other. All three ratios simplify down to 7 to 6. So if all the ratios simplify down to the same common ratio, they're equivalent. But also, I notice you can multiply by the same scale factor to get each ratio. So if I take 7 to 6, I can multiply times 2 to get class 1. If I have 7 to 6, let me just use this one again, I can multiply by a scale factor of 6 to get the whole 7th grade. So all three of these ratios are actually equivalent to each other. Now, down here I wrote other equivalent ratios, 21 to 18, 35 to 30, and 70 to 60 to name three. There are an infinite amount of equivalent, of equivalent ratios, but I just put three. Now, each of these ratios written depicts boys to girls. Remember, order matters when you write ratios. So it's important when you write them to explain what the ratio stands for. All right, exercise number one. This should be a review. You are determining what is the better buy. You've had multiple assignments dealing with this. So read through the problem. I would suggest you consider doing some close reading and then solve to figure out which one is the better buy. So which one is cheaper per um, pack, per pencil. Then, sorry guys, then make sure you explain your answer. So it says which is the better buy and how do you know? There's plenty of space there to show your work and explain your answer. When you are done, please come back and check the video. For exercise one, the better buy is the pack of 30. So before you start freaking out, no, you do not need to write all of this. But the more notes you guys have, the better it kind of is. And it's also helpful 
to understand problems from a bunch of different perspectives. So the pack of 30 has a unit rate of approximately 27 cents. Okay, The pack of 12 has a unit rate of approximately 40 cents. So that means you would pay about 27 cents per pencil in the pack of 30, whereas the pack of 12 you would pay about 40 cents per pencil. Okay, Now that's the way we have learned to solve with the unit price. Now what you can also do and what you notice in this first row of the table, you don't always need to get to one. As long as you get to the same number of pencils, you can compare the price. So we can take 30 to 60 by multiplying by 2, and we can take 12 to 60 by multiplying by 5. What you notice here is for 60 pencils, the pack of 30 is about 1594, whereas the pack of 12 is about 23.85. So that's another way to show the pack of 30 is cheaper. Okay? And what you have here is the relationship written as a ratio. Okay? And then the rate, then the unit rate, then the unit of measure. Rosa. So all this table does is it breaks it down a little bit more step by step comparing the unit price. But really, after this first comparison at 60, you can tell the pack of 30 is cheaper. You don't always need to go to the unit rate if going to the unit rate is not easiest. But most of the time, going to the unit rate is the quickest and easiest strategy. All right, um, so this lesson, very, very short. Um, what I want you to do is go through, um, read this lesson summary, and then answer these seven problem set questions. When you are done, come back and check the answers, and that will be it for Lesson 1, Module 1 for 7th grade math. All right, so 1A here, the, unit, the rate is 60 miles per hour, making the unit rate 60. Um, remember, the unit rate is the amount per 1. You can find that by dividing miles and hours to get speed in miles per hour. Uh, B, you should have got 12 customers per day. 360 divided by 30 is 12, and your unit rate here is 12. C is where our unit rate starts being a decimal. Um, 40 divided by 16 is 2.5, so you have 2.5 meters per second, making your unit rate 2.5. And, and for D, you should get approximately $1.59 per pound. Um, the unit rate as a whole is 1.592, but in context, because we're talking about money, you're looking at this $1.59 per pound. All right, number two. So right here you will see three possible equivalent ratios. We get this one by dividing by two, this one by multiplying by two, and this 27 to 6 is taken by using this ratio and multiplying by 3. Okay, So we took the simplified ratio and multiplied that by 3. Okay, So those are three possible answers. That does not mean your answers need to be that, but you need to have three ratios and they need to be different and they need to be equivalent. Alright, number three. Um, Mr. Rowley's ratio of homework paper to exit tickets is 16 to 14. Mrs. Rivera's um, is 64 to 60. Now, the ratios are not equivalent. And one way to determine this is because their unit rates are not equivalent. Now, another way is just if you're trying to get from, let's say, 16 to 64, you can find that scale factor. What do you need to multiply 16 by to get to 64? Okay, which in this case is 4. 16 times 4 gets 60, 64, but 14 times 4 does not get 60. So therefore, because you have to multiply by the two different scale factors, they're not equivalent. But another way is just to compare their unit rates. Their unit rates are not equivalent, therefore the ratios are not equivalent. All right, number four, um, if both boys spend five hours on homework and reading, Jonathan will be able to play three hours, okay? 
and Lucas will be able to play two and a half hours. Okay? So, basically, Jonathan's unit rate is 36 minutes or six-tenths of an hour um, of video games for every hour homework. Lucas only gets 30 minutes for every hour. Now, one way to do this, another way, and I'll write it down here, you have this ratio of 5 to 3, and, and these this is um, Jonathan. Over here we have Lucas. Um, Lucas' parents, he could play 30 minutes for every hour of homework. So Lucas, we have 1 hour to 30 minutes, which is half an hour. Now, if we want to compare, this is actually a unit rate because you have one here. So you can divide by five to find the unit rate. And you would get this answer. Okay? Or you can take Lucas and multiply both parts of this ratio by five so that your homework amounts are the same. They both be five. But what you would notice is this number here is two and a half. In two and a half, what you'll end up getting is this. Lucas would be five to two and a half. Two and a half is less video game time for the same amount of homework than Jonathan got. So you can either find the unit rate or you can get to the same value. Now, number five, um, the ratios are equivalent. Okay. Um, you can find the value, you can find the unit rate or the simplified ratio, which is two to five. Or what you can do um, is you can multiply by the same scale factor. But for number five, they are equivalent. They both simplify down to two to five, and they both have the same scale factor to get from one value to the next. All right, number six. Devin's sister is not correct. She actually divided in the wrong order. Okay. Um, she needs to divide the price by the drink. So remember, we always do the dollars first to find unit price. The unit price is approximately 50 cents, not about $2. All right. Number seven. Um, the correct answer here is $7 approximately and 54 cents. The unit price per book the school played, so the cost per book for the school, is three twenty-five. dollars So to make $1,500, you would need to make a profit of four twenty-nine dollars per book. Okay? And that came from the $1,500 divided by the three fifty. dollars Okay? Now you need to add those two to offset the cost, and that gets the seven fifty-four. dollars Okay? So it is approximately 754 for number seven. And that wraps up module one, lesson one in seventh grade math.